for your weird story from the Bible today. I picked one that's also a little bit spooky because we're still in the Halloween All Saints camp here. So this one comes from the book of Daniel, chapter 5. You might have heard of this story before, um, and it's weird. So this um, story is considered historical fiction in that the main characters um, were real characters. However, not all the details or the timelines in this are exactly accurate. So this story takes place when the Israelites are in exile in Babylon. And I just want to read to you some of this story and kind of explain it as we go. So it says, King Belshazzar, there I said it right that time, made a great festival for a thousand of his lords, and he was drinking wine in the presence of the thousand. Under the influence of wine, Belshazzar commanded that they bring in the vessels of gold and silver that his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken out of the temple in Jerusalem, so that the kings and his lords, his wives and his concubines might drink from them. Which is super disrespectful, by the way. <laughs> like taking the sacred objects out of the temple and using them for your party. Mm. So they brought in the vessels of gold and silver that had been taken out of the temple, the house of God in Jerusalem. And the kings and his lords, his wives, and his concubines drank from them. They drank the wine and praised the gods of gold and silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. So they're using these sacred objects to celebrate and praise other gods. Eh. Immediately, oh, this is where it gets good, folks. Immediately, the fingers of a human hand appeared and began writing on the plaster of the wall of the royal palace next to the lampstand. The king was watching and the hand as it wrote. Then the king's face turned pale and his thoughts terrified him. His limbs gave way and his knees knocked together. The king cried out to bring in the enchanters, the Chaldeans, the diviners. And the king said to the wise men of Babylon, whoever can read this writing and tell me its interpretation shall be clothed in purple, have a chain of gold around his neck and rank third in my kingdom. So then all of the wise men and the enchanters and the diviners and the sorcerers came in and they could not read the writing. They could not interpret it for the king. Then King Bel Bel Belshazzar became greatly terrified and his face turned pale and his lords were perplexed. So now what happens next is the queen comes in. The queen comes in and says, do not let your thoughts terrify you or your face grow pale, for there is a man in the kingdom who is endowed with the spirit of the holy gods. In the days of your father, he was found to have enlightenment, understanding, and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods. Your father, King Nebuchadnezzar, made him chief of magicians, enchanters, Chaldeans, and diviners, because an excellent spirit of knowledge and understanding to interpret dreams, explain riddles, and solve problems were found in this Daniel. Now, let Daniel be called, and he will give the interpretation. So, they call Daniel. He comes in. The king says to Daniel, So you are Daniel, one of the exiles of Judah, whom my father the king brought from Judah. I have heard that you have the spirit of the gods in you, and that enlightenment, understanding, and excellent wisdom are found in you. Blah, blah, blah. My wise men couldn't figure this out. They couldn't read it. They couldn't translate it. I hear that you might be able to do the trick here. So he promises... If you are able to read the writing and tell me its interpretation, you shall be clothed in purple, have a chain of gold around your neck, and rank third in my kingdom. Then Daniel answered in the presence of the king, let your gifts be for yourself or give your reward to someone else. Nevertheless, I will read the writing to the king and let him know the interpretation. So basically, keep your gifts. I'll just tell you what it is. I don't need a reward for this. So he goes on to say, 
O king, the most high God, gave your father, Nebuchadnezzar, kingship, greatness, glory, and majesty. And because of the greatness that he gave him, all peoples, nations, and languages trembled and feared him. He killed those he wanted to kill, kept alive those he wanted to keep alive, honored those he wanted to honor, and degraded those he wanted to degrade. But when his heart was lifted up, and his spirit was hardened so that he acted proudly. He was deposed from his kingly throne, and his glory was stripped from him. He was driven from human society, and his mind was made like that of an animal. He, his dwelling was with the wild asses, and he fed grass, and he was fed grass like oxen, and his body was bathed with the dew of heaven until he learned that the Most High God had sovereignty over the kingdom of mortals and set over it whoever he willed. So I don't know if you remember that part of the story that Nebuchadnezzar um, <laughs> was doing bad things and he started acting like an animal and like went out into the wilderness and was eating grass and they thought he act was acting like an oxen and it's a, just kind of a weird little part of the story. And so Daniel goes on and says, You have exalted yourself against the Lord of heaven, the vessel of your temple that you have brought in before you, and you and your lords and your wives and your concubines have been drinking wine from them. You have praised the gods of silver and gold and bronze and iron and wood and stone, which do not see or know, but the God in whose power is your very breath and to whom belongs all your ways, you have not honored. So, from his presence, the hand was sent, and this writing was inscribed. And the writing that was inscribed, it was four words. They were, Mena, Mena, Tekel, Parson. And this is the in interpretation that David gave, or David, Daniel gave, of these words. Mena, is God has numbered the days of your kingdom and brought it to an end. Tekel is you have been weighed on the scales and found wanting. And Parson, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. So then the king is so pleased that he has an answer to what this writing means and says that he goes ahead and he gives Daniel a robe and the gold change, all those things he promised and that Daniel wasn't really interested in to begin with. And this is how the whole story ends. That very night, Belshazzar was killed and Darius the Mede received the kingdom. That's the story. Interesting, huh? So you may have heard the phrase, the writing on the wall. That's where this comes from because, you know, the finger shows up on the wall and starts writing on it. Um, and that meaning, that saying has become the meaning of saying that something is imminent, it's a done deal, or it's like kind of like a warning of something unpleasant if you say the writing on the wall. So that is your weird story for the day. Kind of maybe a little bit spooky with the this disembodied hand right on the wall. So we'll see you next time for more weird stories from the Bible.